Hi everyone, my name is Genta Yoshimura. I'm a researcher at AISD and Mitsubishi Electric Corporation in Japan. Today, I'd like to talk about my solution at the KDD Cup 2021 Match Dataset Time Series Anomaly Detection. This presentation has four parts. First, I'll introduce the problem setting of the composition. Second, I'd like to explain an overview of my solution. Third, I'm going to look at some anomaly score functions for detecting anomalies. Finally, I'll finish with a brief summary. Let me start with the introduction. In this competition, a total of 250 datasets were provided. For each dataset, a real-valued univariate time series X of length T and a location T0 to split X into train and test data are given. For evaluation, the ground tooth location of anomaly is given as an interval, which was unknown during the competition. This assumes that every time series has exactly one anomaly in the test data. You will get one point if the identified anomaly's location T hat is within the ground tooth interval with margins on both sides. The goal of the competition is to produce a single algorithm that can find the anomalies of all datasets. Next, I'm going to give an overview of my solution. It's a quite simple algorithm because its procedure has only two steps. In step one, it computes multiple non-negative anomaly scores. In step two, it selects the anomaly score with the most prominent peak. In the next two slides, I'll describe the detail of the process in each step. Step one consists of two phases. First, subsequences in the test data are quantified into anomaly scores using a sliding window. Anomaly score function f returns a non-negative anomaly score yt for a subsequence of length w. To deal with various lengths and types of anomalies in the dataset, I tried 32 different window lengths w and 11 different anomaly score function f. I'll show you some detailed examples of anomaly score functions later. Then, the anomaly scores are smoothed using a moving average. This reduces noise of anomaly scores to improve the stability of anomaly detection. In this way, I obtain a score ST that represents the average anomaly score within the open interval from T minus W to T plus W. Step two also consists of two phases. First, a prominence is computed for each anomaly score S. The prominence is defined as the ratio of the first peak to the second peak in the test data. Because of the assumption that every time series has exactly one anomaly in the test data, the larger the prominence, the more appropriate the anomaly score. After computing the prominence of all anomaly scores, the anomaly score that maximizes the prominence is selected. Finally, the first peak location of this anomaly score is detected as an anomaly location. Here you see a list of 11 different anomaly score functions used in my solution. I'll explain three anomaly score functions painted in light blue in the next three slides. Let me begin with the simplest anomaly score function. A peak to peak value represents the amplitude of a subsequence. It can be computed efficiently by taking the difference between the rolling max and mean. I computed it not only for the original time series X, but also for the first and second order difference of X. These functions can detect anomalies where the position, velocity, or acceleration is locally large. Next, I'd like to explain the second anomaly score function named matrix profile, MP, 
which is a powerful tool for time series data mining. The MP is defined as the denormalized Euclidean distance to the closest subsequence. In this equation, all subsequences within the test data are compared to all subsequences in the train data. This is referred to as an AB join and can be used for the novelty detection. I also computed a self-join for the outlier detection where all subsequences within the train and test data are compared with itself. There are several algorithms for computing the MP efficiently. In this competition, I use StamPy, which is a powerful and scalable Python library. Although the MP is a promising anomaly score, in some cases, the MP values of normal subsequences become large, which leads to false detection of the normal subsequence. For example, this problem arises when the noise in the normal time series is large. To deal with this, I propose a novel anomaly score, which I call normalized matrix profile, NMP. The MP value dt is divided by a normalization factor dt, which is a z-normalized Euclidean distance from the closest subsequence to its closest subsequence. The NMP is inspired by the local outlier factor concept. The current definition corresponds to the simplified LOF with the number of neighbors k equal 1. This is a short summary of my presentation. I proposed a simple two-step time series anomaly detection algorithm. It achieved a high anomaly detection performance. In addition, there are several advantages in the proposed algorithm. First, it is reproducible because it does not need shoot random numbers at all and is completely deterministic. Second, it is scalable for the large time series. Although computing matrix profiles can be a computational bottleneck, it can be accelerated by GPU or distributed processing. Third, it is interpretable because it can provide hints about the length and type of anomaly by returning the selected W and F. Finally, I would like to thank the hosts for organizing such a great competition. I'm sure that this competition will bring great progress in time series anomaly detection research. That is all I want to say. Thank you for your attention.